Over the next decade, close to one million Canadians will be living with dementia. It is important to educate ourselves on how to care for loved ones who will need support. Please welcome the Director of Cognitive Wellbeing at Amica Mature Lifestyle Centre, Heather Palmer. Heather, thank you very much for coming in. Also, um, Friday is World Alzheimer's Day and also it is Alzheimer's Month. Uh, those are massive numbers for here in Canada. Huge, huge. And what, what can we do, what, what can we look for first when we're trying to spot the early stages of Alzheimer's? Because you can make a difference at that stage, can't you? Absolutely. So some of the first things to look for are changes that just feel out of the ordinary compared to other same-aged peers or other seniors. So disorientation, confusion, um, having trouble sort of making sound decisions like wearing shorts in winter or heavy sweaters in summer. Those are usually some of the earliest indicators that something is going on and you really want to pursue it to understand it better. And for family members, how can they help at that point and also when, when, do, when is it time to make that difficult decision that maybe they need more help than that? Um, I would always encourage start off as early as possible to see a medical professional because the more you can chart and track over time, the faster you can identify what truly is going on. So for family members, having conversations with mom or dad and really trying to understand, you know, are they aware of some of these changes and what can we put in place in the home to help maintain them in their home um, in a safe, comforting environment and at what point do we need to start to consider communities like Amica who can help to support them a lot better. Now what are some of the things we have here? They're, they're interesting and they're a great yeah. idea on, on helping people with Alzheimer's or with dementia. Yeah, in, in so many cases we, we want to really personalize um, and customize the experience for every resident or every loved one and you want it to do it in a very subtle way so you don't want to be overt in mm -hmm. some of your approaches. So for example, we have a shadow box. So this is something that we place outside the, the resident suite. It helps them to orient them and it helps them to feel comfortable that this is their home. Uh, we also uh, often use our multi-sensory boxes or we call them my life story box. And they're just a collection of different items that the resident themselves can sort of in a tactile way or through sense be recreating memory so if they used to play baseball you might have a baseball glove in there so instead of just engaging in conversation with them there's other ways to sort of reach some of those memories and for them to feel that joy and that purpose that they once had and continue to have and it really I mean it really must help and it must help the family as well for to see them respond to things like that too. oh it's wonderful because you'll see somebody just suddenly touch a tennis ball or smell an apple scented candle and although they may not be able to verbalize all of their memories of living on an apple farm. You can see the change in their face, the change in their demeanor, a decrease in stress and anxiety because it's bringing them comfort. Any, and even something like the typewriter? Absolutely. Kids, this is a typewriter, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely. So in, uh, at Amica, what we do is we actually have all these different what we call life stations. But again, they're very subtle so that people feel comfortable interacting in the environment and coming across things that might be familiar to them from their own home. So we've, with um, engaging in gardening, deadheading a plant, having raised flower beds, so that just as if they were in their own home, they might suddenly start to take care of the plants or sit down in an office setting and do some typing. We want them to feel that. And I guess almost a sense of normalcy. A sense of normalcy, absolutely. Yeah. Are, are we making, are we seeing advances in trying to battle Alzheimer's and dementia? Absolutely. So from a treatment perspective, we're making great progress. But I think really where we need to focus our attention and why this is such, such a great opportunity is the awareness, the education, the understanding. Because the more the public understands some of these early signs and that there's lots that people can do in their own homes to really support and preserve the dignity of their loved one, I think we'll see a lot of improvements in terms of how it's managed. Because it's really the behavioral symptoms that are the challenge for the loved ones as well as the families, so we want to try and get on that as early as possible. Okay, Heather, thank you very much for coming in. And again, uh, International uh, Alzheimer's Day is on Friday this year. For more information, go to breakfasttelevision.ca.